In this video, I'll be showing you the top 25 settings you need to change if you've just got your brand new Apple Watch SE 2 or any other Apple Watch that runs the latest Watch OS 10. I'm going to be covering everything from battery saving settings uh, to feature settings, as well as security and privacy settings with plenty of tips and tricks along the way to ultimately help you get the most out of your Apple Watch. And as always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to start, I want to show you the top battery saving uh, settings as well as a few tips and tricks as I get a lot of questions of people asking me how I get my Apple Watch to last me all day, uh, even a day and a half without turning off all these smart features that make this watch so great. So let me show you how I do this. Uh, and this starts with charging. So for this first setting, we're going to jump into settings and then we're going to scroll down to where we find battery. Tap on that. And then further down the list, we'll find battery health. And then in here, you're going to want to turn on optimized battery charging. So I'll turn that on. Let me briefly explain what this does. Basically, this is going to keep track of your typical charging habit. So let's say you plug in your watch uh, in the evening before going to bed, and then we'll unplug it in the morning when you wake up. Now, what it's going to do is when you plug your watch in at night, it's first going to charge to 80%. However, then wait with the remaining 20% till closer to when you wake up and take your watch off the charge, essentially staggering the charge. And what this results in is in limiting wear on the battery and this will preserve your battery health over time and the longer you preserve your battery health the better the battery life while we're here i also want to show you another setting uh, or feature called low power mode so if we go back one page uh, you can see that we can actually toggle this here uh, an alternative way to toggle this would be to go into the control center so press the uh, the side button here tap on the battery percentage, and then we can also toggle low power mode in here. Now, this is something I only recommend you do when you really need an extra couple of hours of battery. I don't recommend running your watch in this mode at all times as it almost defeats a little bit uh, the purpose of having a smartwatch. Again, the aim here and as well as this video is to keep the features that you enjoy using and get value from, but then turn off the ones that are needlessly running in the background where low power mode really turns off a lot. It's going to limit uh, how often it checks for measurements such as your GPS, uh, your, your heart rate. Uh, it will also give fewer app updates or so your mail, your messages, etc. So in other words, if you really need an extra bit of power, definitely turn this on. Otherwise, I suggest you keep this off and just follow the rest of the settings that we're going to go through today as these combined are going to give you that all day battery life. However, again, if you do need it, this is how you toggle it. Now, I want to take it to the watch face, one of the most important parts. And I think one of the best things about the Apple Watch, however, what watch face you choose and how you set it up really can have a very large or smaller impact on your battery life. So to give an example, you can see here I have a very modern watch face. I think it looks great. Uh, but if we look at each of the corners of the screen, we have these four little icons and these are called complications. They're essentially mini apps that will give you info at a glance. You can see the weather, uh, you got your life temperature, uh, we can see the activity rings which will fill up throughout the day as you, uh, as you walk, as you exercise shortcuts for timers, more weather info, etc. Um, and complications are really great. However, complications can complicate uh, your watch face and thus have a larger impact on battery. As I mentioned earlier, that these are essentially mini widgets. And in a way, that's true. And they also run consistently. So they're always up to date, meaning every time I unlock my watch or I check the time, this weather will be up to date, my activity rings will be up to date. So there's a lot running in the background. And the more of these complications you have, the more battery this will take. So my suggestion is, while I really enjoy using complications, less is more. Only use the ones that you really find yourself getting a lot of use out of. For me personally, I love using the activity rings on the bottom here, as well as finding the weather before heading out the door, especially here in London where it rains half the time. So it's great to see the temperature uh, and weather conditions. But other ones like, for example, uh, this I believe here is air quality. Let's say I don't want that anymore. I don't need that. I don't really look at that. So how do you remove a complication? Well, to do this, you're going to press and hold on the watch face. First, make sure your watch is unlocked and definitely make sure to use a more complicated password than the one I have here. Uh, what we're going to do is edit the watch face. And then along the top here, we can scroll to different layers of this watch face. So first, we'll be able to choose the color. And if we scroll to the right, we'll find complications. And again, you can see that you can assign them to each of the corners. Some watch faces you can also assign uh, to the middle of the watch face. But let's take a look at this top left one here. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it. And I can choose to say what I want that complication to be. So if I go back, I can actually choose between apps but all the way at the bottom of the list, I also have the option to turn it off. And as you can see, I now no longer have a complication there. And then pressing the uh, digital crown twice will bring us back to the watch face. And you can see I no longer have a complication there. And it's just one less thing running in the background. 
Great, so now that we've optimized the watch face, let's optimize the display, as this is probably, no, definitely uh, the biggest source of battery power drain. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into settings. We'll go back on the uh, into the main settings here and then scroll to where we find display and brightness. So there we go tap into that and then first we can adjust the brightness now you can have this a little brighter uh, or a little darker now because I'm filming I keep mine a little bit brighter but normally speaking I actually keep it slower a little bit lower down at this level so one sort of a third of the way up uh, and I do this because the Apple watch I find I find it to have really good auto brightness to where in darker environments it will dim the brightness to a point where it won't disturb you or say others uh, where in a dark environment or a bright environment say out in the sun you'll still be able to see the display as it gets bright enough again up to 2000 nits here on the SE and it will still do that regardless of which setting you set up here this is more just the average brightness so the lower you have this the more battery this is going to save it also if we scroll down we also have the option to turn on or off uh, wake on ra uh, raise wrist now basically what this means is when you tilt your wrist or rather turn your wrist do you want your watch to automatically turn on and show you the time now, if you have an apple watch se2 like i have here this watch does not have an always on display so having the watch automatically turn on when you uh, when you turn your wrist is a very useful feature to have however if you're really uh, really keen on saving all the battery you can you can choose to to turn this off as this too will take some battery but i prefer to keep this on now if we scroll further down we can also adjust the wake duration now again because i'm filming i have my set to 70 seconds so i don't want it to go dark all, all the time uh, however normally speaking it doesn't take you more than 15 seconds to check the time at least i don't think it should uh, so then we can go ahead and set that to 15 seconds to again make sure your display is not running uh, when you are not using it as you can see, the Apple Watch has a lot of apps, uh, even out of the box, and some of these I think are really useful, but others I don't find myself using so much. So I want to be very aware of what apps can run in the background of my Apple Watch and which apps can. So let's go ahead and adjust the background app refresh. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go into settings and then tap on general. And then a little bit further down the list, we're going to find background app refresh. Now, here we can scroll down to where we find an entire list of all the apps that are on your Apple Watch. And you can manually turn these on or off by clicking the toggle. Now, as you can see, I haven't turned off background app refresh for all of my apps, as some apps I always want up to date. And these two are actually great examples. Uh, this includes my mail and my maps. These are two apps I use often. And whenever I tap into these, I want them to be up to date and refreshed. However, other apps, apps I don't really use on my Apple Watch, I just turn off as I don't want these to be running in the background using battery when really they don't need to. And just one thing I also want to clarify, uh, here at the top of the page, you do have the option to turn off background app refresh for all apps. And while you can do this, again, if you want to really save all the battery, you can. I wouldn't advise this as against certain apps, particularly maps, I like to have always up to date. If say I'm finding a location somewhere, trying to uh, find which turn to take, which road to take, uh, I'd rather have the maps be ready whenever I open it. So in that case, I do allow that to be on. Uh, so really my advice here would be to just audit them, go through all the apps that you use. And if it's an app that you don't use on your Apple Watch, just turn off the background app refresh. Now I want to talk about Siri. Now Siri on the Apple Watch, I find it to be really useful uh, as having Siri right on my wrist means I use it more often. It's just so convenient. Uh, set a timer while I'm cooking or create a uh, calendar event, set a reminder, etc. However, how you use Siri really matters, especially when it comes to battery. So if we're going to take a look here in settings, we're going to scroll down to where we find Siri. And then as you can see, on your Apple Watch, you'll probably have this first setting turned on, and that is called Listen For. And what this basically means is your Apple Watch is going to be constantly listening for the activation phrase. I'm not going to read them out loud to trigger your smart assistance. Uh, however, basically, when you say any of these um, uh, these these uh, activation phrases, Siri will automatically start and be ready to take a command. Now, from one hand, this is useful because it's a hands a hands free way to access Siri. However, this also means that your watch is going to be constantly listening for that activation phrase. It's going to be using the microphone phone uh, and always running in the background. Again, something that really takes a lot of battery over time. My suggestion instead is to turn this feature off and instead to use Siri by or activate Siri rather by pressing the digital crown. You can see if I press it here on the side, what's the weather? As you can see, that's another way to very easily and quickly, I think still activate Siri and this will save you a lot of battery over time. So again, turn off the activation phrase and only use the digital crown to activate Siri. Great, so now that we've looked at some top battery saving settings, let's head over to some feature settings. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is how to unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. We're gonna jump over to my Mac and I'm gonna show you how this is done.
All right, so on your Mac, first you're gonna to want to go to system settings, and then along the list on the left-hand side, we're gonna scroll down to where you find touch ID and password. And then along the bottom of this page, you should find your Apple Watch listed. If it is not listed, make sure your Apple Watch is on the same Wi-Fi and also linked to the same Apple ID as your Mac. Once you found your Apple Watch, just click the toggle here on the right hand side. And then from here on, your Mac will automatically unlock when it detects your Apple Watch is near. And even better than that, when you walk away from your Mac or say from your desk, it will also automatically then lock. This is super convenient. And again, gives you the convenience of not having to type in your password, but still gives you the security of knowing that your Mac won't just unlock if anyone comes close, only when you do. Back to the Apple Watch, let's take a look at the app view. So if I look at my applications, uh, you can see I have this grid view, which looks really nice, but sometimes I find it can be a little bit tricky to find an app you want, especially because this isn't really sorted in any kind of order. So what you can do is actually changes. If we go into the settings here, we're gonna go to the main page, and then we're gonna scroll down to where we find app view. And here we can also change to a list view. And as you can see, all your applications are now gonna be in a list. And my favorite part is that they're in alphabetical orders. So you know exactly where to scroll roughly uh, to find the app you're looking for. I think if you're often switching between apps on your Apple Watch, this may not be as pretty as the grid view, but it sure is more functional. Speaking of functional, let me show you how to adjust the text size on your Apple Watch. This is a feature I immediately change, or uh, one of the many things I immediately change when I get a new watch. So to do this, uh, we're gonna go into settings and then scroll to where we find display and brightness and then tap on text size. Now, by default, you're gonna be right in the middle and we'll show you uh, here with a preview on the bottom what your text size will look like. And you can choose to make this larger, or also smaller. Now, personally, I like to make mine a little bit smaller. As you can see, the smaller the text is, the more words will fit per line, and also the more lines uh, can, can be shown at a time on your Apple Watch. So, for example, I like to preview emails or messages on my watch, and I find it annoying to always have to scroll. So having the text be a little bit smaller makes it just more readable as opposed to having it larger. Of course, on the other hand, if you do wear glasses uh, like me, or if you need a stronger prescription perhaps, uh, then it can be great to also turn up the text size as it'll make it more easy to read. But again, for now, as long as my eyes permit at least, uh, I like to keep mine a little bit smaller. Something I find really handy on the Apple Watch uh, but that is actually off by default and you need to activate in settings is having the ability to take a screenshot. So to do this uh, in settings, go on uh, go into general and then scroll to where we find screenshots. There it is. And then you're going to want to turn this on. Now, if you press and hold or press rather the digital crown and the side button, you'll see the screen flash and it will take a screenshot. This is super useful if you want to, uh, I don't know, you have a good new record uh, for your latest run and you want to take a screenshot to save that new high score. Uh, you can go ahead and do so by enabling the setting. Now, screenshots are saved in your photo gallery on your iPhone. Again, making it super convenient to view, access and share from there. Speaking of running, uh, let's take a look at the activities apps. Now, one of the things I love most about the Apple Watch uh, is how it encourages me to move more throughout the day. And the activity app is a big part of that. However, I do think the activity app does have sometimes one too many notifications. Uh, not only does this affect your battery life, but also your attention. Basically, when my, uh, when my Apple Watch goes off, I wanna know it is something important. So for example, the standard reminders is something I really like. I often sit at the desk uh, writing videos or researching or editing videos like this one. Um, so when I sit for more than I think 50 minutes a day, yeah, 50 minutes, um, it will warn me or essentially remind me to stand for the next minute or so. And I find this to be really useful. However, other things like daily coaching uh, or goal completions, these I turn off. I find that to be a little bit much. Uh, I prefer to just look at the activity rings that I have on my, on my watch face and see my progress throughout the day rather than to always be reminded. So I suggest turning off these two notifications, but keeping on the stand reminders. And again, the more you turn off, the more battery you're gonna save here too. One feature I also immediately turn off on any Apple Watch is automatic download from the app store as I don't want all of my apps for my phone to be filling up storage on my Apple Watch especially because the Apple Watch doesn't have all that much storage to begin with so to disable this uh, in settings we're going to scroll to where we find app store and you're going to turn off automatic downloads this means that all the apps you have on your phone won't automatically be downloading a version uh, of that app to the Apple Watch one important distinction I do want to make so I have some questions about this um, Let's say, for example, I have Uber on my iPhone, but I don't want the Uber app to download on my Apple Watch. Does this mean I can still get notifications from Uber on my Apple Watch? Yes, it does. All the notifications on your iPhone will still come into your Apple Watch. Again, unless you choose this differently in your settings, but you don't need the app on your Apple Watch to also get those notifications. The same thing can be said for WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp, unfortunately, does not have an app for the Apple Watch, but I still get my WhatsApp notifications within the Apple Watch. So turn this off. Uh, beneath that, I do recommend you turn on automatic 
updates. So for apps that you do have on your Apple Watch or that you specifically uh, want there to be or want to be there, I do suggest you turn on automatic updates to always get the latest uh, security updates and of course new features as well. A small feature uh, I really like is using focus mode. Now, if you don't know what focus mode is, I've done a more in-depth guide on my iPhone, which I'll uh, leave linked at the end of this video, which also shows you how to set up focus modes. But a setting here I wanna show you is if you tap into this and we scroll down, you can also choose your focus mode here. But I think more importantly is you're gonna want the focus mode to mirror to what is set on your iPhone. So for example, if say I'm filming, I often set my work focus mode and I want that to be the case on my Apple Watch too. So this won't just silent notifications on my uh, iPhone, but also on my watch. All right, this next one here uh, is for my fellow left-handed people. Uh, I'm going to show you how to change the orientation of your watch. So to do this in settings, we're going to tap on general and then go into orientation. Now, as someone who's left-handed, I wear my watch normally on my right hand. However, if I were to do so, the digital crown would be placed here. And this means that if my watch is on my wrist, I would have to go across the screen to touch the digital crown, often blocking the content I'm trying to view. So my suggestion is if you do wear your watch on the right wrist like I do, again, if you're probably, as you probably probably do if you're left-handed, you can then turn your watch around, so rotate it so that the digital crown sits on the lower left. And this means you don't have to cover your screen while you're trying to access your watch. Now I wanna show you some really essential security and privacy settings. First thing we're gonna do is disable analytics and improvements. Now to do this, we're gonna tap on privacy and security scroll down to where we find analytics and improvements. And in here, you wanna turn off basically sharing uh, analytics and improvements data with Apple. And what this means is your watch is gonna share less data with Apple. And at the same time, it's also gonna save you battery as battery is used. Of course, it'll take battery to collect this data and then send it over to Apple so we don't be a Wi-Fi. So having this off not only gives you a little bit extra privacy, uh, but also saves you some battery. A big reason why many members in my family have the Apple Watch, uh, it is for the SOS and safety features, namely fall detection and crash detection. But you're gonna wanna make sure that these are activated to really get the most out of these. So in settings, if we tap on SOS, for example here, let's take a look at fall detection and by default, this will be on, however, only during workouts. You also have the option to turn this to always on. And this is something that I definitely recommend you do just because you never know when you may fall. Yes, a workout, it may be more likely, but if you're already wearing the Apple Watch, why not have this always running. And the same thing can be said for crash detection, another feature I definitely recommend you turn on, so make sure this is on if it is not on already. Going back to the settings screen here, and just above that, we have the passcode setting. And here, I highly recommend you turn on unlock with iPhone, as of course your Apple Watch will have a password as well, or passcode as well. So when say you put it on in the morning, and if you're already using your phone, your Apple Watch will detect that you're using your phone and that your phone is unlocked, and therefore will automatically unlock the watch, so you don't have to enter the password on your watch. Scrolling further down, we have another setting that I highly recommend you turn on. Uh, if you've seen my iPhone videos, I always use this on my iPhone too, and I do the same on my Apple Watch, and that is called Erase Data. Now, let's say your Apple Watch is lost or stolen. Chances are the person that finds it is gonna try to get their way in by guessing your password. This means that after 10 failed attempts, your watch will erase itself. So this means that basically when your watch is lost and no longer safe, your data still is, as you can always find it backed up in iCloud. And this means that this watch will no longer have your data. And finally, to turn off your Apple Watch, simply press and hold the side button, and this then will also enable you to show the medical ID or start an emergency call. And then we're gonna tap here on the top left, top right rather, for the power, slide it to the right, and turn off your Apple Watch. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. These are the top 25 settings that I immediately change on my Apple Watch SE or any new Apple Watch, really, as long as it runs Watch OS 10. Let me know if you have any questions at all. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. And for more content like this, be sure to check out my top 25 settings to change for iPhone. I'll leave that video on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and take care.